You are watching Trading Day on BNN Bloomberg. Well, we got jobs data on both sides of the border. And on both sides of the border, it was mixed to slightly negative. In Canada, while we managed to add jobs for the first time in three months, when you look at the quality, it was less than comforting. A lot of that was part-time jobs, a big pullback in the full-time category. While the unemployment rate rose to the highest level outside the pandemic since 2017. And in the U.S., it didn't add as many jobs as expected. The unemployment rate did come down. And while it is likely a green light for rate cuts, the big debate is, did this number, 142,000 jobs, really answer the question about whether we're going to have 50 basis point rate cut or 25 basis point when the rate decision is made in September. Let's bring in Beata Carancy, Chief Economist at TD Economics. Beata, why don't we start on the Canadian side? Um, and, and I'd love to get your interpretation of the jobs data and the kind of picture it's painting for the Canadian economy. It's definitely painting a picture that the labor market's continuing to slow. And that is despite the fact that we had a decent amount of job gains, just about 20,000 jobs. Um, but I think the difference is, is the unemployment rate keeps rising. Um, and that's related to the fact that it's, the job pace is just not able to absorb the labor force. That has been the case for some time. Uh, the unemployment rate's up about 1.5% since about April of last year. So if this continues to happen, it'll add downward pressure to wages over time. It's definitely telling us the economy has a lot of slack starting to build into it. And it definitely reinforces the Bank of Canada's decision to cut three times is the right decision and won't be the last decision to do so. We would expect them to continue on this path right through to 2025. Does, does, does this data point or the trajectory of jobs increase the pace of easing? Not necessarily for the Bank of Canada um, because they got a jump, right? They start, the policy rate mm. was lower than what we saw in the US and they've already done three cuts to zero on the Federal Reserve side. Um, so they're already moving at a pace that is fairly consistent to market expectations. Uh, I think if you were to see them accelerate, you would probably need to see negatives in front of those job tallies. So we probably need to see a couple of months of negatives. And then we haven't had that yet. And we'd have to probably see the consumer really capitulate. And we haven't had that yet either. So now let's turn to the U.S. The big question is, are we going to get 50 basis points? Are we going to get 25 basis mm -hmm. points? Did this jobs number answer that for you? No, <laughs> unfortunately, as you opened up with. Um, we're in the camp that they'll likely deliver 25 basis points. And the reason is, is that, as you noted, this jobs report is a bit mixed. It's positive in the sense that it's you know still well over 100,000. It's consistent with the US labor market slowing, but it's definitely not going off a cliff. So there's no alarm bells going off here. The unemployment rate actually ticked down. Hours actually went up. Earnings actually went up. So when you look at all the pieces of the report, it wasn't screaming 50 basis points. And then to add to that, when you look at some of the underlying data of the US outside of the jobs report, it's also not screaming that anything negative is coming down the pipeline like a recession. It's definitely still in the soft landing camp. But the Fed really has to get going. Um, and I think if they were to do 25 basis points on September 18th and have a very dovish lean, basically let the markets know if conditions warrant, they will go 50 or more. I, that will help pin down yields and prevent any backing up. So you automatically get implicit easing filtering over to lending rates without them having to be aggressive on the policy rate. Now, I want to challenge you a little bit on that, that this jobs number maybe is still indicative of a soft landing. I want to talk revisions. You know, the market basically mm -hmm. had, a, had a freak out when the jobs number <laughs> last month came in at 114,000. Turns out it wasn't that. It was 89,000, which yeah. is the worst that we've seen since 2020. Um, you know, how are you dealing with all of these revisions and, and how much stock are you willing to put on the first initial read of the jobs numbers? Because the revisions have been pretty consistent recently, taking jobs out of the original number. 
Yeah, and we also had a benchmark revision, a preliminary review of that, and that took about 800,000 mm -hmm. jobs off the tally over the course of a year. So your point is well taken that the job market is soft. Um, but I think we have to be a little careful, and, I, and the Fed does this as well, of focusing on the data every single month. You need to average it over the course of three to six months uh, so that you're not reacting to every little wiggle in the data. Last month, there was also a hurricane barrel and, and you know employers would not have been hiring or conducting interviews. So there's some little quirks and distortions that we think are happening. And that's why they pull that lens back and they say, like, what's happening on quit rates and hiring rates and other factors? All of those, to your point, are now at pre-pandemic or slightly less, but none of them have the recession signals coming up, right? And they tend to lead the economy a little bit. So this is why I think they ought to get off the sidelines and they have to maintain confidence in the markets that the first cut is not the last. They're going to continue at a steady pace. But if they were to go 50 basis points, you could actually do the opposite and panic the market mm. into thinking they see something that you don't know about. And so I think they have to walk a line here, especially because it's the first cut in many years. they got to get it right. Absolutely. And, and we're hearing from Federal Reserve officials today and probably what's going to be the last time before they go into blackout period. Mm -hmm. um, John Williams, Christopher Waller, both. It seems like there's there's a broad consensus that rate cuts need to begin. Yeah. And I think Waller, like Governor Waller even made the point that he'd be open to doing yeah. 50 basis points, which is tell it's exactly, I think, how the communication will follow on the 18th from Powell is like, listen, this is what we did right now. And if conditions warrant, we'll move faster. But right now, this seems like the pace we're going to go at. Also, don't forget in mid-September, we're also going to get an update of their dot plot. And that's where all the presidents and governors of the Federal Reserve indicate what their forecast is for this year and next year and the long term. And that's what ultimately really anchors market expectations. So I suspect we're going to see in that dot plot many of these um, FOMC members indicating more rate cuts than they had thought back in June. And that's going to probably anchor down those yields and kind of keep the, ha the market happy from that perspective. Because ultimately, what we don't want is yields to, to rise again on disappointed expectations and all of a sudden you implicitly lead to the tighter lending rates.